We got a ton of new updates from Airtable in the last week, and I'll be honest, a lot of these are updates that we've been asking for for a long time. So I'm very excited to jump in and start exploring. If that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest to you and you want to learn more about how we do that, swing by our website and don't miss our Airtable crash course. If you're new to Airtable and you want to get up and running quickly, that is the perfect way, totally free crash course for you to subscribe to and, uh, and get all the uh, good tips. But in the meantime, let's just jump into today's topic. We've got a lot to cover and we just got four massive new updates. I'm going to try to get them all compressed into one video. Let's get to work. So the first awesome thing that uh, we got this month was the uh, conditional roll-up, look-up, and count field. So let me tell you quickly about in the old days, if you have a linked record, in this case we've got contacts and invoices, and if you wanted to get some sort of you know roll-up based on conditions, then you had to build some extra fields and all this stuff to make it work. I've demonstrated this in previous videos. And quite frankly, it took a lot of extra time to build these extra things, right? Why make these extra pieces if you don't need to? Well, finally, Airtable has released conditional values for the rollup, lookup, and count field. So let's take a look at how this works. We've got a contacts table here. I've got five different people that we have in our database. And then we've got a bunch of invoices. Now, of course, the invoices link to a contact, and a contact can have more than one invoice, right? You'll notice on the invoice, we're tracking what date was it created, what's the subtotal, what's the tax, if there is tax, what's the total, and then did we receive it? And if we did, what date, right? So the idea here is if we haven't marked it off as being received, we haven't received the payment yet. So in this case, we've got three invoices, one for Luna, Neville, and Harry that have not been received. So what we want to see on our roll-up page back at the contacts we are using a roll-up function here. We're looking at the connected relationship to invoices, and we're looking at that total amount, so the, the total for each invoice, and we're using a sum. That's pretty cool. We could always do this before, and what it's doing is it's adding up all of the invoices that these people have uh, you know, been assigned to over time. Cool, but here's the thing that's new. If we want to look at some sort of conditional roll-up, we can now do that. In this case, I've set this to say, look at the invoices, then look at the total, but only include the total if the date received is not empty. That means, of course, that we've actually received payment on that invoice, right? So in the, you know, as I was saying previously, we would have to build a formula that did this first, and then we'd have to roll up that formula. But now we can eliminate that extra step, and we can just jump right in and get a sum here. Now, you'll remember that three invoices were unpaid, Luna, Neville, and Harry, and that's why, in this case, Harry doesn't match the total billed and the total received. Over here, we've got same thing right here for Luna and same thing right here for Neville because, again, we're not including the amount received here if they haven't paid the invoice. So this is a really cool feature. It's going to save us a ton of time building stuff, and I'm really excited to start implementing it more and more. All right, so let's talk about feature number two. Feature number two is the ability to have conditional values in our forms. So previously, if you wanted to build a form that changed or adapted with information as it was filled out, we had to use a third-party form software because Airtable's integration with, or rather Airtable's uh, form capabilities were not robust enough to allow for that. But now they have added conditional forms or a conditional feature to the forms, meaning we can block certain fields on a form if conditions are not met, which is a really great feature to have, especially considering that Airtable is not first and foremost a form software. The fact that their forms are getting this robust is really exciting. So in this case, I've built uh, an invoice form where we are collecting the invoice number, the contact, the date created, subtotal tax, and the tax amount. The tax question mark, of course, is the drop down, either yes or no. And then if we do need tax, then of course we want to fill it out. The only field here that we're not filling out when we create an invoice is what day it was received, right? And so that's over here to the side. 
But this tax amount is going to be based on the condition of whether it is a taxed invoice or not. Because if it's purely services, for example, we won't owe tax on this in or we won't charge tax for this invoice. So we are now able to make this condition inside of our form. So we can say only show a, a certain field when conditions are met. In this case, when the tax question is answered yes, only then do I want someone to be able to input a tax amount. So let's go ahead and pop this form open. You'll see that when I'm filling out this form, let's make a new, uh, a new invoice here and I'll pick on Ron Weasley. Let's say that was created today. I'm going to have a subtotal of 5,000. Only in the case where I say that there is tax, does this tax amount pop up here? If I mark this as no, then the form never shows it. So this is a great new feature. We couldn't do it before. And now we have the capability to uh, just inside of our form, show certain fields when certain conditions are met. Very cool feature. Okay, that takes us to the third update for April. And that is the tweaks that were made to the URL preview block. Now this is a block part of the pro plan and it has been available before, but the downside to the preview block was it would kind of shift around and, you know, potentially give you previews on uh, blocks or on uh, URLs that you didn't necessarily want it to be looking at. The great upgrade now is that we can tell it to look at a specific field for a preview. Now, in this case, I've gone ahead and taken my form URL. This is my invoice form right here. And I have added that URL here. And then I've written a formula to pre-fill these forms with the contact name. Now, this is something I've covered before in videos uh, in terms of pre-filling forms, if you want to go check those out. But basically, the idea is when I click on this form, it's going to open up a form that is pre-filled with that contact information. And this is a great use case for, you know, using forms, but the best part of the URL preview block, as you see here, I'm looking at that specific field. So it's never going to get confused and look at the wrong field. And now inside of my database, when I switch to a different contact, this block is going to automatically look at that URL in that form for specific contact which means essentially I can fill out a form without ever leaving my database, which is really great. And this is going to tie into the next, the fourth, and probably the biggest of the updates. I don't want to give it away just yet, but by being able to do this, we can make certain fields required, meaning that other people cannot enter records unless they filled out all the information. How much does it stink to get partially filled out information? It's the worst. So now we can make sure that when something is submitted, let's go ahead and pick on Luna this time. You see that her contact information is already filled out and that's because I have selected her inside my contacts. I can go ahead and set this all up and this is just going to then create a new invoice for her. Then and there. And now if I pop back into my invoices table, there it is. There's the information all linked appropriately. So it's really nice way to again, not have to leave your database and you can just work with different URLs there inside. And now you can assign this block to specific fields so that it's always looking at the same thing. All right, that takes us to number four. And I got to say number four is a, ma <laughs> it's a massive deal. It's something we've been asking for for so long. We can now edit permission levels at the field and table level. This is a big deal. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this now works by right clicking on uh, a field or just by clicking that drop down arrow up here at the top. We can come in and edit field permissions. Now, some fields don't allow for you to edit permissions in the case of roll up fields or other dependent field types. We can't necessarily edit those permissions, but let's go ahead and pick an independent field type like an email address or a name. And when I do this, you see that I have the ability to edit the field permissions. Now, when I click this, I can change now who has the ability to edit values in this field. And this is a big deal. These are all of the different levels of permission inside of the database. Maybe I've shared a database with many people. I only have two people at creator level, but the rest, like let's say eight or 10 people have editor privileges. Well, now I can turn off specific fields and say, Sorry, editors, you can't change these. 
only creators can. Or maybe I want to give it just to specific users and eliminate the errors that come about when people accidentally change data without meaning to. And best is we can just say nobody has the ability to make changes here. If I go ahead and make this, uh, oh, also, of course, I have the ability to allow the field to be set in records created through forms. So that would be new records coming in. Okay. Um, and once I've got that saved up, let's say I want it like this, you'll notice that I can no longer come in here and make changes to these email addresses. If I submitted a form that created a new contact, then that would, of course, be just fine. But there's no way for anyone to now come in and accidentally mess that stuff up. This is a game changer. But the best part is this also pertains to tables as well. So I can come in and at the table level do the exact same thing, edit table permissions. And here I can say who can create records and who can delete records. I have worked with a lot of clients in the past who have had people on their team accidentally deleting records and they've had a hard time getting those things back. They didn't realize they were gone until it was too late. And now you have the ability to disallow people to accidentally delete things or accidentally create new things. This is a game changing uh, new feature and I'm really excited to start exploring it more and more. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.